I nearly cried one time when I was given a passage in our church. We have turns at preaching and we're going through, um, I think it was Luke actually. And um, and when Jesus, the blind man Bartimaeus, was calling out, Jesus, have mercy on me, Jesus. And Jesus' first words to him were, what do you want me to do for you? Now that's, I think, should be the question every counsellor asks. What can this conversation do to help? We live in a world where there is more access to information than ever before. Generations, young and old, are being exposed to radically different ideologies and opinions every day. It can be so overwhelming trying to decipher what's true and what's false. But there is a way. Join me as we discuss some of the toughest questions out there about Christianity, the Bible, and culture. I'm your host, Nick Lackey. Welcome to The Garrison. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Garrison. Today, we're going to be sounding a wee bit different, and if you're watching a video, definitely looking a wee bit different, because I am on Zoom, and I haven't done a podcast episode on Zoom in a while, which is quite nice because I'm in, in my slippers and my sweatpants, uh, which is a lot different than what I'd be used to in the studio. But the reason is I am interviewing my good friend, Matt Cameron, who's all the way down in Timaru, which if you don't know, is about two hours south of where I am. But uh, yeah, it's great to have Matt on. Hey, Matt, before we get into the topic for today, why don't you introduce yourself, you know, tell us where you're from, what you do, how many fingers you have, what sport you love, you know, all that normal stuff. Really? Why the fingers? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I am Matt and I'm down in Timaru. I was born and bred in the Waikato in a little town called Morinsville, which makes me a moron. Pause. And um, so I'm married um, for 24 years now and I've got two teenage, oh, not teenage boys, they're young 20s, 21 and 23 year old boys. Um, both were living at home. But one's just gone on a on a big ship cruise now um, <clears throat> at the moment, and and perform. He's a performer. Um, I've been a teacher for twenty six years. Started off, um, I did a Bible college degree, and then went teaching, and then I did a counselling training diploma, and I'm currently working full time as a counsellor in primary schools and and doing some private counselling as well. And I really love that. And I also do some training. Um, stuff around using a solution focused approach for counseling and and social work and teaching and stuff as well so that's probably enough from me yeah and we can't miss the oh, fingers the fingers oh yeah <laughs> i had a little accident a few years ago and chopped a deep cut on two of my fingers and they ended up taking them off when i got to the hospital because they were so badly damaged yeah so well, that's why the fingers. So I must be looking forward to the trouble uh, counting to ten because I've only got nine <laughs> fingers if you count them as halves. Yeah, you must be looking forward to our, our, our new bodies and the new earth then. But yeah, be one hundred percent complete again. Because God can heal amputees. Amen. Amen. All right. Getting into the important stuff then, Matt. Not that your fingers are important, but uh so you mentioned before you are a counselor. So before we get into the questions that I've got for you today. Can you tell us what is your approach to counselling and why is it maybe different than the norm? Mm, yeah, no, good. Let me let me read a verse in Ephesians. Um, this is one of my favourite ones in terms of thinking about counselling. <clears throat> now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to his power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, the thing I like about that verse is it's just this idea that when we live, we can have abundant life. Now, John 10.10 10 says the same thing when Jesus said, like, um, the thief comes to rob and steal, but I came to give you life and give it in abundance. When he taught the disciples to pray, he said, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, talking to God. And um, I want that for people when I'm talking to them. So the approach I use is called the solution-focused approach. Now, it isn't a Christian approach. However, <laughs> I think um, I can't think of any more approach that isn't as Christian as this one when I start nailing it down to um, those kind of verses that I just read as well in terms of putting off the old, putting on the new. We're a new creation to strive 
for what's ahead, forgetting what's behind, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You know, all those verses just seem to just jump out of the Bible to say, yes, this is the approach um, we need to be using when we're talking to people. So solution focused is that it focuses on solutions or outcomes, not on the problem. So it's kind of, and I've had in the last week, I've actually had a couple of clients saying, I really need to dig deep into my past and where this kind of came from and my insecurities or my addictions or whatever. And I'm just going, I don't see that in the Bible. You know, <laughs> let's let's put off the old and put on the new and fix our eyes on Jesus mm -hmm. author and, protector, and run the race that's set before us, you know, um, have this abundant life, which is more than I can ever ask or imagine, you know. So <clears throat> that's where I'm, I've landed. Um, and I, I love it because that's the sort of that's I get inspired every conversation I have with people because then they start coming up with all these wonderful solutions and wonderful things of let's imagine a miracle takes place and tomorrow you're living in that miracle. Um, what would you start to notice? So, yeah, very enjoyable way of counseling. Yeah. And for those of you, if you haven't met Matt in person, I first met him back in January. And I had the privilege of watching Matt have one of these conversations with someone and seeing just how different it was to your normal conversation, where, as you say, people were digging into the past, digging into the the old things. But yeah, I, I saw just how effective this was. So with that being said, Matt, why is it so important that we do follow biblical principles and ideas that do improve our mental health? And, and perhaps just before you answer that question, let's touch on what mental health really is and what do we mean when we're talking about like a mental health difficulty yeah true because that does get thrown about all the place all the, uh, i mean i have kids you know my anxiety and my adhd or my insecurities <laughs> um my mental health you know just anything like that so um when we're talking about mental health it is what's going on in your brain um and how how that affects you and your emotions how that affects your behavior um I think biblically, you know, this whole, I'm thinking back, you know, as hymn writers, they talk about this melancholy or something, you know, there's those sorts of things and, or the, um, being, why are you downcast, oh my soul? You know, David prayed in Psalm 42. Um, there's a lot of Psalms where it talks about the brokenhearted and God's got a special place for those who are brokenhearted. And I think that's kind of, to me, tapping into that, um, you know, we need help. <laughs> We're not doing it alone. And um, actually, yeah, things are, people are broken. Um, obviously, when philosophically the sin just took away that perfection, that that, that image it marred the the image of God in our lives. And so we try we 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 want to have conversations to, um, you know, see that image of God in people again and treat them that way. Is that sort of touch on it what do you think yeah no that's really good i think just clarifying like that from a biblical perspective we do acknowledge that there are you know people do face these difficulties when when it comes to their mental health and i love how you're talking about like the broken hearted that's often the language that does get used in the bible and so in light of this i mean we recognize in our culture that this is very prominent right that there are a lot of people facing difficulties so taking the solution based approach uh, you know, what then are some good principles or guidelines or, or, or biblical ideas that can help us um, maybe starting off individually, what can help us to uh, improve our mental health? Mm. Oh, no, I just love, um, I nearly cried one time when I was given a passage in our church, we have turns at preaching and we're going through, um, I think it was Luke actually. And, um, and when Jesus, the blind man Bartimaeus, was calling out, Jesus, have mercy on me, Jesus. And Jesus' first words to him were, what do you want me to do for you? Now that's, I think, should be the question every counsellor asks. What can this conversation do to help? Um, and it's not the question that we see typ typically on TV is, so what's brought you here? Mm. <laughs> that's a very different question because that's past, that's problem. Let's say, what do you want to get out of this? And, and typically the solution-focused approach says, what are your best hopes? 
And there's a cool story that goes with that if I tell if I do tell it. And it's something around this is not word for word or exact, but it's something like there was a counselor named Chris Iverson, and he lives in the UK in London. And he was having a session, this is back in the 90s, with a lady who had, I think, been abused as a child. She had been like date raped, who was on drugs, um, had addiction problems. She was currently in her 20s and she was in an abusive relationship then. And he was, she was telling him this story and he was kind of listening. And the question they would usually ask back then was something like, so what do you hope to get from today? And so he asked that question, what do you hope to get from today? But when he asked that question, he heard himself sounding despondent and hopeless. So he kind of perked himself up and said, I mean, what are your best hopes from this conversation? And it just led to a, a worldwide movement, <laughs> basically asking, what are your best hopes from this? Because it's not just uh, in Christian terms, I'm, I'm not a Pentecostal myself, but... <laughs> I've heard, you know, lots of sermons around, and I'm not against Pentecostal, um, but in terms of we don't want to just survive these things. We want to thrive through them. And that goes back to those verses I was reading about, you know, Jesus, the, the thief comes to rob and steal, but Jesus came to give us life in its abundance. And I think that's where we, we want to go next level. And I, I mean, I did CBT um, training initially, and that was kind of like, you know, getting past these things and that sort of, but I, I want to go beyond that. I want to. I want to. I want to have super abundance. You know, <laughs> let's let's see this thriving, not just surviving, sort of stuff. So, um, does that answer the question? <laughs> now <laughs> I went on a tangent, I think. But yeah, you know, the, I mean, that's the, the basic principles are just saying, what do we want to get out of this? What are mm -hmm. the best hopes? What's the best outcome that could possibly happen? And when I say outcome too, can I just clarify that? Because I've had conversations, you know, where the husband of um, a grieving husband says his best hopes is that his wife would come back mm. alive and so my question to that is what difference would that make and what difference would it make and he he said something like this is a true story um well i'd want to get out of bed i'd have purpose for living you know I, I'd, I'd have goals for the day now that's an internal state it's not the wife so i could ask so suppose tomorrow somehow you wake up and this purposeful living, this want to get out of bed, this um, having goals in your life is there, but your wife isn't. What would you notice? What would let you know that those things are, are actually happening in you? Mm -hmm. And so that's, um, that's the, again, you're, you're going for outcome, not goals. <laughs> I suppose that's the difference I'm saying. So the kid that said, you know, I want a million dollars and, I could say, what difference would it make to have a million dollars? Well, I, I would be able to buy whatever I wanted. And what difference would it make to you to be able to buy whatever you wanted? I'd be happy. Okay, so let's suppose tomorrow you woke up and you didn't have the million dollars and you didn't have all the toys you could buy, but somehow you had the happiness that would come from, if you did have those things, what would you notice about yourself that let you know that happiness was there? So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of stories I could tell, but it's it's the focus on outcome, not not goal. And then you just want to describe in the solution focus, whether it's in the past, you know, when you were happy, happiest or most motivated or surviving, <laughs> thriving, um, when, or in the present, what sort of strengths and, and resources do you have at the moment that are helping you live that kind of life? And let's see that amplified and growing. Or maybe there's a miracle happens and it happens um, tomorrow. What would you start to notice that would let you know? And what would others see in your life that would let them know that this miracle had taken place? Yeah. Lots of cool stories here. Yeah, that's really cool. It's funny, actually, ever since January, when I did hear you first speak about this stuff, I've been using some of these questions with the kids at the kids program that I work at. And yes. so it's as simple as, you know, I ask a kid, instead of how was your day, in which a lot of cases they'll say bad, or like today I said, uh, what are you most looking forward to? I oh, no, this was me trying to focus on the on the positives. And I said, what are you most looking forward to about the rest of the year? Because there's this one kid who was a wee bit down, rather than saying, hey, what's wrong, man? And getting him to dwell on like the the problem. Mm -hmm. And then that's when he perked up and said, uh, or, or I think one of them said, oh, I'm, I'm going to America later mm -hmm. on. And they started, you know, the, the, the kid's very respondent. And so 
she uh oh no maybe this was this was a girl and she started thinking about the positive things coming up and instantly you could just see her perk up mm. whereas in the past when i've talked to kids and i say you know what's the problem tell me what's wrong um how did this happen you know they just kind of bury themselves in the the bad uh the badness a great word Nick, of of the Maybe moment <laughs> yeah yeah and so uh, it's been so helpful already just practically being able to be a much better teacher to these kids but also mm -hmm. just in day-to-day -day life with friends family and being a greater witness for for christ as well and, and doing mm -hmm. things the way he would now i want to touch on something as well matt in terms of let's say someone's listening right now and they are having mental health difficulties for whatever reason what are some practical ways that them as themselves they can i guess practice things which will help improve their mental health and i mean things like maybe touch on gratitude and thanksgiving these things are, are biblical um we have those foundations laid for us so how and how does that help and how does it relate to the solution uh based mm. thing as well yeah 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 i mean obviously you would say let's let's look forward rather than back <laughs> would be a first first point i remember hearing a story i think john MacArthur told this story about this old lady that was in his church and um he said he complimented her and said, "How do you do it? You're just always happy." And she said, "You know, John, the Bible says to rejoice. It's a command, so I do it. <laughs> I don't know how that fits, <laughs> but it's just there, there is scripture. You know, it says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. But then in Philippians four, which is like the happy letter of the Bible, it's described. Um, it goes on to say, you know." Um, or is actually, if you're literally saying it, it's be anxious for nothing, not don't be anxious. What's the difference? You can ponder that philosophically. Be anxious for nothing. It's like um, be angry, but don't sin <laughs> in Ephesians. Um, so, but then it goes on, but in your prayers and your supplications with gratitude, present your request to God. And then verse eight goes on to say, and whatever is pure, and lovely and i'm going to lose it because i'm thinking too fast <laughs> but there's sort of verses it's like think about these things you know and so there's a kind of thing what we feed in our feed our minds it's a what is it the the good dog and the bad dog you know whichever one you feed is going yeah. to get strong yeah. um and so um so those are the kind of those are some real kind of principles but then again We've got other things around us. I mean, the Bible talks about carrying one another's burdens. So don't be afraid to give yourself over to someone else and and, and seek help as well. I think it's really, really important. It says to admonish one another, you know, to if if you see someone sinning, then go to them and show them your fault so you can win them back. You know, that's the um, church discipline passage in that, Matthew 18. Um, so there's a community that we're part of as well. So um that's, I think that's a really important part of it. Um, just thinking, reflecting today with a with a client actually, in a, with a Bible verse about this whole the holistic part of us. You know, the, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Well, there's kind of your heart is the is that connection base. You know that sort of thing. Your your soul, your spirit, your connection with God, um, your body. You know, do exercise. <laughs> You know, what's the verse in Timothy? Physical exercises of some value, yeah. but godliness is of great value and gain, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so there's those things as well. And then mentally, your mind as well. Feed it the right things. The Philippians 4, think on these things, you know, whatever's yeah. pure and lovely and admirable and praiseworthy. Um, just let's do that sort of stuff. So again, I'm going to wrap it on. And <laughs> but the Bible's full of it. There's, wherever you go, there's all these things. Yeah. Can I and jump in real quick? Wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not wrong to be sad either. Mm, you know, the okay. Yeah. Does that, you know, why are you downcast in my soul? Why is it so disturbed? And put your hope in God for I will yet praise him. And, and, and there's that sort of thing as well. Yeah, jump in. Yeah, I was going to say, I love that. I think it's Philippians 4, 8, where it says, whatever is true, noble, lovely, et cetera. Um, yeah. you know, meditate on these things. And I heard a really great analogy from a book I read. I think the, the book was called Every Believer's Thought Life. But it went like this. It said, you know, try your best not to think about purple elephants. 
and then it basically just talked about purple purple elephants so it's talking about you know don't think about their their purple fluffy ears and their big purple trunk and their purple tail and, and the whole idea is because you keep hearing about this purple elephant even though you're trying not to think about it that's all you think about but then it goes on and it says all right this time only think about orange monkeys riding a motorcycle and then it gives this big description about orange monkeys riding a motorcycle and going up a ramp and the whole time you you know it, you're told to think about these orange monkeys and at the end of it it says well notice what changed you stopped thinking about the purple elephant and the mm -hmm. idea was because we're fixing our eyes on the orange monkey we forget about the negative thing of purple elephants so instead of do not think about purple elephants a much greater way to stop thinking about purple elephants was think about an orange monkey instead and i think the same can apply and they use this with philippians 4 8 instead of dwelling on things like the past dwelling on things which have gone wrong instead if we fix our mind on well first and foremost christ and what he's done for us on the cross uh, but then thinking about all the blessings that we have in our life all the ways in which god has provided for us even the simple things like being able to walk and talk and breathe and eat and drink and sleep, you know, all these things we so often take for granted. When we fix our minds on these things, it's going to drastically improve just our, our mental health, really. And so, yeah, as you say, it's all over the Bible, these these commands mm -hmm. to give thanks and to fix our minds on uh, yeah. on these good Think things. About, yeah, on things yeah. not things below, yeah. I was think, thinking of the illustration too, I often see this one with parenting where the um, toddler starts going up and playing with the stereo buttons or touching the tv and and the parent will say don't do that stop doing that stop doing that and then they stop and then they'll go back to it and they start doing it again but the wise parent i'll use that in quotes um speech marks says don't do that come over here and do this so it's the putting off and the putting on yeah. is really important, which is what repentance is. It's not just stop going in this direction and go this direction, but but turn around and go this mm. direction. It's it's a full 180, you know? It's yeah. it's stopping something and starting something. I mean a funny story of this was my I had a teacher, this is nothing to do with Christianity, <laughs> but he had, he, he was a, a chain smoker, he smoked heaps, and he decided he wanted to stop, and so he took up eating oranges. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that was what he replaced his addiction with. Then he became addicted to oranges, you know, <laughs> which was more healthy. But, but just, he was always eating oranges, you know. <laughs> oh man, that's quite good. So then, Matt, if if I mean we've touched on some great things to do. If you yourself are <laughs> putting struggling, off putting on, yeah, 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 putting off and putting on. But what about this? What if you've got someone, a friend or a loved one, or or just anyone that you come across who is having these difficulties? And they want to talk to you about it. Now, often that can be quite a scary situation. I was in one of those situations not long ago. And sometimes it can feel like there's a lot of pressure to say the right things. And, you know, yeah. it feels a wee bit sometimes like you're walking on, walking on eggshells. So what are some great, yeah, and you touched on them a wee bit at the start, but what are some great questions and just ways that we can be loving our our friends, our families, and even the strangers that we're talking to? You know, what are some great questions, ways, and, and particularly from the Bible. So what would you say about that? Yeah, no good question. I think um, one that's the first thing that comes to mind when we have people that are struggling is this Hebrew principle, they use it for grieving, is this sitting Shiva. I don't know whether you've heard of that. And it's basically, Job's friends did it, right? When Job was going through all his suffering, they came and they sat with him seven days without saying a word it says there in, in job and it's like wow they just sat there if, if job wanted to talk they would have talked but if they don't then you don't and, you, and there's it's it's kind of there's that sense of like you don't actually have to have the answers just being present mm -hmm. is a nice thing you know um we you look at the when jesus wept in john 11 and um just there's not a lot said there but it's like when he wept the next verse says, the Jews looked and they said, see how he loved him. Mm. <laughs> so there's that sense where just being there um, is, 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 is lovely. And if the son of God can cry, um, then we can cry too. You know? it's like, there's, there's an example. 
of that. But um, in terms of that focus, you know, when someone says, look, I'm, I am struggling, you know, it might be um, ask the question, look, are you, they, they talk about suicide prevention. It's, it's, it's a good thing to just say, are you thinking of killing yourself? It's actually a good thing. It's not mm -hmm. bad. <laughs> it's not putting it in their head because we're, if someone says yes, then I'm going to say, okay, well, let's go and get some help. Not mm -hmm. here's this number and go and phone it if you feel like it, 1737. Um, <laughs> but stay with them, go with them, you know, be there, be present. Um, it's, that's the most important thing. If you feel like you've got advice to give, you know, take a pill and <laughs> get over it. <laughs> because what works for you might not work for mm -hmm. someone else, you know, as well. So I'm I'm very cautious about advice, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, what I mean, you got to remember if you're talking to a Christian and you're saying biblically, they've got the same Holy Spirit as you. <laughs> um, he is the comforter. He is the counselor. You know, we're not that counselor in that sense. You know, that, that word, the parakletos, isn't used about a human. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's only used the Holy Spirit in Jesus. So um, that's the ultimate <laughs> there. He's the advocate, you know. Um, so I think, and that's one of my hobby horses. I think a lot of pastors get on their high horse and, and start thinking, you know, just just obey this verse and do this and do this. And quite often that just comes across as condemning and um, not trusting that the person in front of them actually know has the same spirit as them. Mm. And so um, <laughs> that is a hobby horse. Um, so I won't go too far down that track, but it's like, actually, they'd be better off. If he, he, it was one exercise I did at the camp, actually. If you've got some really good advice, try asking questions so that the person comes up with that advice for themselves. Mm. Because if they come up with it for themselves, it's so much better and it works, yeah. you know, it, it's, 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 um, they're more likely to put it into practice. If, yeah. if they do it themselves and, and it's like questions like so what's worked before mm -hmm. little questions like you know um what do you know about god that's going to get you through this kind of questions it's, it's finding solutions in terms of um let's pray those prayers you know your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven um let's let's go there jesus was the great question asker you know yeah. <laughs> what you don't want to do for you sort of thing and Unless there's sin, you know, you can, of course, we need to confront that. Um, but again, even then, it's like, what do you think God would say about this? You know, what would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Jesus have us do is probably a better question, you know, as yeah. well. Um, takes it out of the subjective to the objective. You know, we've got a, a love letter from God to read and give us instructions. Let's let's use it. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Yeah. Now that's super helpful, Matt. And and that thing you're saying before about getting them to say it themselves. I can't remember what the quote is or, or who said it, but something about when you tell someone something, they'll remember some tiny percentage of it. But when they say it themselves, they'll remember it so much more, which is why, as you say, asking questions is just unmatched. And, and funny enough, like obviously this is an apologetics podcast uh, uh, most of the time anyway, but asking questions in terms of having apologetics conversations is super effective as well. Asking questions yeah. when it comes to evangelism is effective. Asking questions yes. when it comes, here we're having, talking about counseling and, and helping a friend out is super effective. And so yeah, it just makes me think like when we try to tell someone everything ourselves, instead of stepping back and asking them questions, I wonder if it can almost become a bit of a pride thing where we start to think, oh, we've got the answers. They need to listen to what I have to say. Whereas yeah. when we just ask the questions and we allow, as you're saying, the same Holy Spirit who's in us, mm -hmm. we allow him to be working through the questions that we ask. That's when we're going yeah. to see much, much greater results. So, yeah, yeah. I know um, Dave Mann and his evangelistic teaching on the um, altogether.com have those three questions, you know, um, what do you mean by mm -hmm. such and such? When you know someone says, "Oh, Christians," it's just all it's it's all the all the wars started from Christians, or <laughs> the Bible's full of contradictions. So, what do you mean by contradictions? You know, or <laughs> the next question is then, and where did you get that idea from? Yeah, you know, oh, no, no, I couldn't have got all the animals on the on the boat. <laughs> oh, what what do you mean? What what do you mean by boat? 
<laughs> or something. I got, you know? I got that exact <laughs> question today, actually. <laughs> How'd you get them on? And then you say, how big was the boat? You know? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, how many animals had to get on it? I don't know. So you, no, I couldn't got all these animals on the boat that you don't know what size it was and how many there were to get on. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Um, and then have you considered is the last question that Dave Mann asked. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the sort of thing. I mean, the other thing is I love this is, is as we think about, I mean, it's not a biblical quote, but you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth. So we should listen twice as much as we talk <laughs> kind of thing. So, and um, what was the other one that, um, if I um, if I talk, I'm never going to learn anything. Like I'm, I'm only going to learn something if I hear it, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, it's just if I take it in. So <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, and that's the thing too. I, I, what I, I said at the start, and I get inspired when I'm doing counselling because I'm learning all the time from mm. the clients I'm talking to with the with the amazing things they come up with. My wife will tell you the number of times I come home and say. Oh, I'm going to be such the best husband now. I've learned so much. <laughs> and she'll roll her eyes and go, yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> well, actually, about that, Matt, what, what was the, what's the name of the, um, when you, when you rearrange the letters of your last name, what's that called? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. Audience. When you, so your last name's Cameron, but you rearrange it to gone. Yeah. 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 It's wasn't it not a cross stick. I'm, I'm going to blank now. Um, yeah, you rearrange the letters and it spells romance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To no surprise, of course. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, my wife will disagree that I'm, I'm not the most romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, finally, Matt, uh, just going back to those questions, it, it brings up as, as well Jesus and the woman at the well and just yes. his, the way that he just questioned her and allowed her to speak. And he, he questions nearly, well, I feel like, everyone he talks to. Yeah. Like the rich young ruler who comes up to him, why do you call me good? And then ask yeah. him questions about the law. And so man, yeah. it's just so powerful in, in all areas of being an ambassador for Christ, whether that be evangelism, teaching, uh, and, and in this case, counseling as well. So, mm. yeah, sure. anyway, I love it. Well, Matt, uh I think we'll end it there. That's been so good. I've I've really enjoyed what you've had to say. And as I say to the audience, I heard this stuff first back in January. I put it in practice in my life and it has helped so much just in day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, so hopefully you guys can do the same with this and it can help you become more effective ambassadors for Christ. So Matt, is there anything else you want to you share before we I, I, shoot I, I, off? I, I was just going to say my website is mm -hmm. dub, dub, dub discoversolutions.nz so discoversolutions.nz and there's a whole lot of resources for free on there that will be that just back up what we've been talking about today there's little practice tasks and things to download and um yeah lots of fun cool yeah i'll make sure to check those in the show notes as well so that people can access that super easy but yeah for now thank you everyone for listening uh thank you again matt it's been so great having you on if you guys enjoyed this episode please make sure to uh, leave your comments let me know what you thought of it let me know what you thought of matt as well be brutally honest uh, and then if you guys have any questions feel free to email me on the garrison pod at gmail.com otherwise i'll see you at the next episode of the garrison <laughs>